Hey guys, I wanted to really quickly introduce you to the circuit we'll be dealing with this week. Um, actually, there are many parts to this project. The first part involves the Artemis Nano and connecting it to a servo motor and uh, using that as a platform to understand what's going on with the servo motor. The second part is using the Cypress PSOC to build a servo-like um, capability on that device and so I want to use this opportunity to introduce you to a couple of the pieces of that puzzle so it's a lot more sophisticated environment on the PSOC but that means it it's not really uh, set up to be quite as easy to get started so the first thing is you need a clock um, I just set the clock to a hundred thousand Hertz I also set up the PWM I want to point out that the only thing I really changed was to set the period to 4096. That means that the time it takes to go through one cycle of the PWM is 4096 ticks of the clock. It's a 100,000 kilohertz clock, which means that um, each tick of the clock is 10 nanoseconds, or 10 microseconds, excuse me, 10 microseconds. Um, which is a hundredth of a millisecond. So 4,096 ticks would correspond to approximately 40 milliseconds, since 100 ticks of this clock would be one millisecond. 4,096 would be 40 milliseconds. Does that make sense? Um, so, and then the way the thing works is it ticks along until it hits this compare value, and then it goes to zero. So the way the PWM signal is generated, the period determines how many ticks of the clock it goes for one cycle, and the compare says how many ticks of the clock does it take before it transitions from high to low. And then at the end of the period, of course, it goes back high, and then it just repeats. So and there's all kinds of configuration options here. You can change. There's a whole advanced tab of, of different things you can do. We're just going to stick with the very simple, basic PWM. It's got a period. It's got a compare. Now the thing that's interesting is you can set the compare value in software. So if we measure a value from the A to D converter, say we can use that value to determine what to set the, the compare value to, and that will determine the width of the pulse. That's going to be important when it comes to understanding how to control a servo. So the other thing I want to point out is I did I took the eight analog to digital converter and I configured it. Um, it's not in the default configuration. So one thing I did was to change VREF to be VDDA over 2. That's half of 3.3 volts, 1.65 volts. And that makes the voltage range of the ADD 0 to twice that. So it's going to be 0 to 3.3 volts. I unclick the VREF bypass. And, uh, and then I went down here and I chose only one channel. I made it single-ended so that instead of differential, it's single-ended. I enabled averaging, and then I selected 16 samples to average. So what's going to happen is it's going to measure 16 voltages, and it'll take the average to report that back to the program. And that's basically it. So, um, And then I created a pin for the ADC and a pin for the PWM. So, and then I just plopped a UART here so we'd have something to talk to if we wanted to send data back over the serial port to help with debugging or whatever. So that's the basic design. Let's see, if I go to the pins tab, um, also it defaulted to pin 00, zero but that, that doesn't actually emerge anywhere on the, on the breakout board. So I switched that to pin 90 for pin 1. And pin 2, it, it wanted pin 10 too, and I just left that the way it is. So um, let's go ahead and build that. I think it actually already built, so it should just say everything's built. Uh, or maybe it'll start over. It looks like it's going to start over. Okay. Okay, so that finished, but unfortunately it won't work. Um, and let's see if we can figure out why. Let's look at the, uh, the source code. So we've got an analog to digital converter, we've got a PWM, we've got a UART, and all three of those have to get started. So I've got to go into the main program 
and call the start method of each of those guys. So we've got ADC underscore one start. I've got PWM underscore one start. And I've got UART one start. Okay. The other thing is if I want to send data back to uh, don't, I don't need that. I want to send data back to the UART. I need to figure out a way to format it. The easiest way, at least one easy way, is to include standard io.h, just like you did CSC at 155. And then we'll use the sprintf function to format text. So what have I got to do here? The PWM runs by itself. The UART more or less runs by itself, but I've got to send it stuff, so I'm going to have to send it um, strings periodically. Um, the ADC doesn't really do anything by itself. It, the start gets it ready to go, but it doesn't collect any data by on its own, so I've got to call that ADC underscore one underscore uh, start conversion. So I want to start a conversion. And then what I need to do is check to see if the conversion is ready. So I'll say ADC1 um, is, is an conversion. And then what I have to do is um, I've got to set a return mode. Um, I'll show you here in a second where this shows up in the, in the data sheet. The data sheet for the... Um, Let's see. Okay, here we go. SAR uh, return status. Uh, hang on a second. I know I looked this up before. Yeah, it's actually it's called wait. <clears throat> so it's wait for result. That's what I want. So what this does is it checks to see if the conversion is done, but by passing in this flag, SAR wait for result, it means it won't return until the conversion is done. So it actually blocks until the conversion is finished. And so then I need to get the result. So I'm going to say result equals ADC1 um, and it's going to be a get result. I only need a 16-bit integer so it's a six, uh, int 16. Okay and then I'm going to say get result and then uh, I need to pass in the channel that I want. I want channel zero. There is, that's the only channel that's actually enabled right now. But um, that's the idea. Then I need to uh, go ahead and use that result, PWM1, set compare zero. So I'm going to, the PWM device can have up to two PWM signals, or up to two comparison values, and we're only using compare zero, so I'm going to set that, and I'm going to just set it to result. But let's cast it first. Let's see. It, it needs a UN32, so I'm going to cast it to an unsigned integer, 32-bit unsigned integer, even though we only got a 16-bit integer from the <coughs> A to D converter, the Compare zero once a 32-bit integer, so that's fine. And then, um, and then what I want to do is uh, let's go ahead and send that back to the UART, so that um, so we can see it if we want to in the uh, serial on the serial port. So I'm going to make a buffer of characters just to hold that serial port data. <clears throat> and I'm going to use the sprintf function 
It's just like printf, except it takes a buffer argument. Um, it's going to be percent %d, and then I'm going to give a new line in a carriage return, <coughs> and then we're going to pass in result. And I should probably cast that to an int, just so sprintf is happy. And then uh, I need to send that. You are one put string and we're going to pass in buffer. There you go. Okay. So I guess I need, yeah, I need to close the if. So if the conversion is over, which it will be because we're going to wait for it to finish before we return, um, we're going to get the result. We're going to set the compare register of the PWM to whatever that result is. We're going to print the result into a buffer and send that back on the UART. And the last thing I want to do is just a delay. And let's delay for 100 milliseconds. So we'll do this 10 times a second. Okay, let's try and build that. Okay, it says it's finished. So what I want to do now is let's pop over to my oscilloscope. See what that looks like. That doesn't look right. Okay. Uh, let's zoom out a little bit. very strange. What if I set this? This is this voltage is the voltage that's going to the A to D converter. So it looks like there's some variation in the A to D value. Hang on. Let's pull open the Arduino. Look at the serial port. Oh yeah, it's jumping all over the place. So maybe something wrong with my A to D configuration. Hang on a second. Okay, that's looking a lot better. So, um, what I it turned out what it was. Now I, you can see the Arduino is giving me much more consistent values. So what I had neglected to do in the A to D, let's pull it up here, is the averaging mode should be sequential. So it was doing interleaved, which means it was flipping between channels, I guess, but only one channel is enabled, so it, it wasn't doing that right. So anyway, put it on sequential fixed. And that seems to have fixed it. And then I just want to show you sort of how it works. The idea is, I'm this is like your bench supply, except I'm controlling it in software. So I can set the output to 0.4 volts and then... Uh, Let's zoom in here a little bit. You can see that that changes the pulse to be high for a little while and then low. If I increase this voltage, it increases that pulse width. If I go up to 1 volt, now it's up to here. Go to 2 volts, right? It's uh, most of the way. If I go to 3 volts, it's almost going to be all the way. Remember, 3.3 .3 volts corresponds to 4,096, which would be 100%. It would, it would never uh, turn off. So, but anyway, this is clearly working now. Um, I can adjust the pulse width by adjusting this voltage. That's changing. If you go back and look at the main program, every time that result comes in from the A to D, I set the compare value of the PWM, and that changes the... Uh, the width of the pulse because it changes the value when it switches from high to low. All right, that's the idea.